Okay, this tutorial will focus on pivot tables. Yeah, pivot tables are a bit of a new concept. They were always part of the higher course, but to my knowledge, I never remember them coming up as part of, of an exam in the last couple of years. I may be wrong, but off the top of my head, I can't remember it being there. Uh, as it's part of National 6, it can come up either in a unit assessment or as part of your final exam, so it's something we generally have to be prepared for. Now, what is the point in pivot tables and why do we make them? Well, we've got a relatively quite straightforward spreadsheet in front of us, but imagine this was anything up to 500 or 1000 entries. It could be quite difficult to read. So what we want to do is to make that data easy to read. We want to summarise it, we want to simplify it, we want to manipulate what's there, we want to make it easier to quantify and we want to be able to compare different areas, different aspects. So what Excel lets us do is to quite simply and quite easily manipulate that data so we can see whatever we want to see really. Now the first stage in creating a pivot table, as long as you've clicked somewhere within the data you've got here, this is how it will work on this version of Excel. If you've got an older version, I can't quite remember. But if you click in the middle, then click on insert and then pivot table. Now, if your data is side by side like this, will bring up a range and it will be absolute cell referenced so your range is selected for you. If your data isn't side by side you will have to establish the range yourself. Now don't panic when this happens, this is perfectly understandable. Your pivot sheet goes to a new page and you're now able to manipulate your data and select the information you want to actually show. Now, these areas here, row fields, column fields, filter and drop values, are all represented by the four corresponding areas down here, filters, columns, rows and values. Now, what you generally get to do here is decide what you want to go where. Now, our pivot table is based upon a bookshop. Now, say for instance we want to just see um, how many books, say for instance, of science fiction each branch sold each month. So let's think about how we want our table to what information we want to show. So for our rows, let's try department for rows. I didn't, so I meant fiction, not science fiction for our type there. And then let's think what we want to put at the top. So I've got our department on the left hand side and at the top let's say we want to look by branch. So we drag uh, branch down to columns and just drop it in there. Let's take on it first of all. There we go, port now. Then we drop our branch into our column area. So, so far we're displaying our departments kind of departments in the bookstore and then we're displaying every branch. Now what we want to show, show next is sales. So you want to see the value of sales. Now the only one that makes any real sense would be sales. We won't do anything to put month in here. So let's put values in here and then we can see we've got department, we've got the value of the sales and then we can change by branch. Now. Also, let's drag month into filters and month will appear up here. This means you can condense your information to look at specific months and specific branches. Now, this has taken the data that was in the spreadsheet and made it a lot smaller and a lot more refined. But let's try and just tidy it up a little bit. Let's click on sum of sales, value field settings. Now we're happy with summing, we don't want to count or average or min or max. So let's go to number format. And let's go to currency. 
We'll keep it at no decimal. Let's take our decimal places down. And we can see we've now quantified it as currency. And it is all a bit more clear now. We could break this down to look at month by month or branch by branch. So let's look at the department and let's um, take off education, take off non-fiction, and undo select all. And just make sure you've only got fiction selected. And then we can check out our fiction for all areas. Now, we might want to look at specifically, say, just for March. And again, it's another way just to break down the details. You can look at a specific branch if you want to. Let's see, we look just simply at Aberdeen. And they had none that month. So again, the whole point in pivot tables, it makes it easier to display information, easy to manipulate, and easy to display certain things you're looking for. Let's just put all our boxes on again and display all our details for our branches and departments. Now just to give a slightly more clear example of the relevance of this, say we wanted to find out which branches have also books that are linked to education and how much they made from selling those books. We'd click on our list, on our drop-down arrow here by department, make sure education is the only one that's highlighted, and click OK. And it shows the four branches which managed to sell books in that area, and the total they have made. So the whole point is that it's easy to gather information, it shows you subtotals, gives you a grand total from the overall profits from all four businesses, and makes it easy to interpret and, and understand information really. So it's a, a time saving tool, it should make your life a lot more straightforward really. So if these come up in assessments, I wouldn't say it's something you should panic about, always just try and think through what you're being asked to do.